In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about the Bonferroni correction. I'm going to describe it. I'm going to show you how to apply it. There are two ways to apply the Bonferroni correction, and we'll make it a comparison with the example in the textbook relevant to memory span and the three groups of alcohol consumption. So a Bonferroni correction, first and foremost, I want to say is a single step procedure. Many people apply the Bonferroni correction as if it were a two-step procedure. And I think that's true because most researchers don't know the difference. They don't know that there is even such a thing as a single step multiple comparison procedure. You're different. You're listening to this video. You've read the How To Stats textbook. Bonferroni correction is a single step procedure. So don't bother doing an ANOVA first. You don't have to. That's what I write here. Does not require a significant omnibus test. An omnibus test is like an overall ANOVA test. It does not need it. So how you apply a Bonferroni correction, there are two approaches. One is, and this is by far the more common approach, is to divide the specified alpha level, so your per contrast error rate, whatever it is that you specified alpha at, and it's almost always 0.05, you divide that by the number of statistical analyses that were either performed or are going to be performed. And so this is the formula. So if you have alpha 0.05 divided by C, where C is the number of comparisons, you obtain an adjusted family-wise p-value that must be achieved in order to detect something as statistically significant. So this is how you can protect yourself. So the alpha level that you need to meet for statistical significance is going to be lower than 0.05 by a fairly substantial amount. As soon as you do three, four, five, six, seven analyses on the same sample of data, the overall family-wise alpha level, which you're going to test for each comparison, it's actually going to be quite low. My preference is to just multiply the obtained p-value tested at alpha 0.05 by the number of comparisons that were conducted. So instead of dividing the p-value and then checking to see whether any of your reported p-values are less than the divided alpha level, instead what you can do is you multiply the obtained p-values by the number of comparisons you conducted and then if any of those multiplied p-values are, are less than 0 0.05, which is the alpha level that we specify for all our comparisons typically, then you'll determine that it's statistically significant. So let's look at an example. So go into Analyze, Compare, Means, One-Way ANOVA. So let's just say I ignore the one-way ANOVA. So I'm going to do Fisher's LSD, but it's not a protected Fisher's LSD. So there's no protection here with the one-way ANOVA. Even though SPSS is going to report it automatically, I'm going to ignore it. So I'm not looking at this table. I haven't seen anything. I'm going straight to these p-values. So given that I'm ignoring what happened here, I'm just going to delete it so I can't even look at it. We can then perform an analysis to help protect ourselves that these p-values might lead us to making a type 1 error. And how we could do that is we would first get the p-values to a decimal place that actually can be associated with an actual value. So these values are all observable now. And we can see that the first comparison was not significant 0.272295. Now I need to apply a Bonferroni correction in this case because I want to demonstrate it. And there is no adjustment made here. So the significant ANOVA is not protecting me because I ignored it, didn't look at it. And to apply the first approach of the Bonferroni correction would involve dividing the alpha level by the number of comparisons, which was three. And in this case, the adjusted p-value that my significance levels have to reach or get lower than is equal to 0 0.0166666. And I would look, using the first Bonferroni approach, I would look at all my p-values that have not been adjusted. These are just ordinary p-values. There's no adjustment. This is a Fisher's LSD. There's no adjustment to the p-value. I can see that this first comparison, which wasn't significant to begin with, is definitely not significant now. By comparison, though, the low versus high group for memory span produced a p-value of 0 0.000017, which is less than 0 0.0167. And because it's less than the adjusted demarcation for statistical significance, it's less than 0 0.05, this adjusted p, uh, alpha level. Because this le p probability value is lower than this one, I would declare it as statistically significant, 
even with a Bonferroni adjustment applied. So that's a good thing in terms of protecting yourself. Now, what about this one here? This medium versus high comparison, 0 0.000993, is still lower than the adjusted alpha level of 0 0.0167. So I would declare a statistically significant effect for that comparison as well. So nothing really changes with the Fisher's LSD because none of the p-values were even close to 0 0.05. But in practice, you'll find often your p-values are quite close to 0 0.05. And whether you apply an adjustment or not will be determining whether you report a significant effect or not. Again, going to the second approach, which is where you multiply each reported VL, what I just showed you was dividing the alpha level and then comparing the obtained p-values with that divided alpha level. Another way is to simply multiply each of the p-values and multiply it by the number of comparisons. So in this case here, the 0.27 2295 times 3 is p equal 0.186. It's basically the same story. It's pushing me way, way close to definitely, you know, almost certainly uh, not significant. And we have this other p value here, 0 0.000017. I could multiply that 0 0.000017 times 3 equals 0 0.000051. And that is the adjusted p-value that's Bonferroni corrected. And I would do the same thing for this, this one here. So 0 0.000017 times 3. And that is the adjusted p-value that I could report for that one. And I can tell you that that's actually what SPSS does when it does a, a Bonferroni correction. You can go into the one-way utility in post hoc, and you can see that Bonferroni is an option, so you can deselect LSD, click Bonferroni, and then it gives me the adjusted p-values for each of the comparisons based on multiplying them by the number of comparisons. And arguably, I think that's an attractive approach to do it, but you definitely see people use the other approach much more frequently. They'll divide the alpha by the comparisons. You can use either one.